a real quick topic that is going to immediately sound military to you, and I am ex-military, so uh, maybe that's why this is kind of a, a second la uh, language to me. But this is relevant in every single company and organization. So it's something that you need to understand and respect. Respect it like it's written on a stone tablet, okay? This is important. You need to understand your chain of command, all right? In the last talk, I was talking about knowing who the boss is. And I hinted at this in that talk. Well, at this point, I want to draw it out a little bit more and I want to make it a focus because it's so important and because so many people screw this up on the job and it affects their employment, i.e. they get fired, they don't get promoted, they get passed over and they don't even realize what they've done and how they pissed anybody off. But it's because they have violated or disrespected or stepped out of the chain of command. What is this chain of command? In an organization, you don't have two or three bosses, even if there are two or three people over you. You have one boss and your boss has one boss, unless your boss is the owner of the company and it's a sole proprietorship. But regardless, in most companies, you have somebody over you, that person has somebody over them, and then that person may even have another person over them. And that is called the chain of command. How, what does it mean to work within the chain of command? Your orders come from one person. That is your boss, your direct supervisor. All right? What if you get some orders from somebody else above your boss or lateral to your boss? Then you smile and say, okay, I'm happy to do this for you. Let me check with my boss and make me sure that this is what he or she wants me doing. And then go talk to your boss and say, I got these orders. I got this request from this other person over here. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Please go right ahead. Okay, because it came from you and you are my boss, I'm going to follow this order. If it had come from somebody else and you didn't want me to do it, I don't care who that other person is. I'm not going to do it. But, you know, now because you're my boss, it's obviously up to you to go deal with this other person and say, hey, stop telling my guy what to do. I'm this person's boss. If you want that person doing something, you come talk to me. Okay, your boss is in charge of you and anything you're doing, your boss is responsible for. So don't be doing things your boss isn't aware of because how can I be responsible for things? How can I feel good about being responsible for things that my employees are doing and I'm not even aware of. But when they screw up, I'm the one that's going to get blamed for it. Heh, you know what? You're working outside of the chain of command and it does not make me happy. It's not going to make your boss at your company happy either, whether they have military experience or not. All right? Let's look at another aspect of this chain of command. You have a grievance. You have a complaint. You're not happy. You see something you don't like. There's some problem. If it needs to be escalated, you bring it to your boss. You don't bring it to somebody at the top of the company. I don't care if during your orientation, the president of the company walked in and said, hey everybody, I have an open door policy. If you have any complaints, if you have any problems, my door is always open to everybody in this company and I want you to feel perfectly comfortable walking right into... Bullshit, okay? Ignore that. It's a lie. It's self-sabotage if you take advantage of that open door policy 
under most circumstances. There are exceptions, okay? If you've been sexually assaulted on the job, take advantage of any appropriate open door policy, go to any resource in the company, get get you know, get help immediately. I, I'm not saying under an extreme circumstance where somebody has done something blatantly illegal, assaulted you or something like that, then by all means, you can take some liberty from the chain of command. You do what you need to do to get that resolved immediately, okay? But getting back into the general discourse here, I'm talking about your everyday kind of working problems. You know, someone ate my lunch out of the refrigerator. Don't go to the president of the company and take advantage of their open door policy. No. <laughs> If you have to escalate a problem, the only person you escalate it to is your direct supervisor. That's how the chain of command works. There are exceptions, okay? What if you have a problem with your supervisor, then you still go to your supervisor and you talk to that person and say, I have a problem with you. I'm telling you to your face because I'm a person who has some integrity and I expect you to fix this problem. And this person either says, you know what? Shit, sorry. I didn't realize that was a problem. I will fix it. And then you say, great, and you go back to work. Or this person says, no, I'm not going to fix it. And then, having integrity, you talk to this person and you say, I understand. I've brought you this problem because you're my supervisor and you've refused to solve this problem. At this point, I am notifying you that I am going to go above your head And I'm going to take advantage of your boss's open door policy. And I'm going to speak to that person about this problem because I really do feel strongly about it. It does need to be resolved and you are unwilling to do so. And this is something you tell your supervisor, pay attention boys and girls, before, not after, before you go over their heads. Okay, if you're my supervisor and I have a problem with you, I'm going to come to you for a solution. And if you refuse to solve the problem, then I'm going to tell you I'm not content with that, that I don't accept your answer, and I intend to go above your head. And at that point, you can say, I don't care or don't do it or if you do, I'll fire you or fine, whatever. I don't care what you say. At this point, I am going to go over to your oh, I am going to go over your head if I feel strongly about this. That I mean, I have to feel pretty strongly to go above your head. But if that's the case, I'm going to tell you that it's coming and I'm going to make sure that happens before I'm going to talk to you first and then I'm going to tell you I'm going above your head and then and only then am I going to go above your head. That's the chain of command. That's how you respect the chain of command. That's how you stay within the chain of command. Another time that you do not bring problems to your boss is if you have a problem with somebody on your same level in the company or below you in the company. There's a rule. Handle your problems at the lowest level possible. Do not escalate problems that don't need to be escalated. I have a problem with another PLC programmer in a different department. I'm not going to talk to my supervisor. I'm not even going to talk to that person's supervisor. I'm going to talk directly to that person. That is the lowest level possible at which I can reasonably expect to resolve this problem. And I'm going to go up to that PLC program and I'm going to say, you know what? Something that you're doing is causing me a lot of work where I'm at. 
Can you please stop doing that and do it differently? And this person's going to say, yeah, sure, I'm sorry, I didn't know that was a problem. And I'm going to have solved the problem. My boss doesn't need to know about it. Their boss doesn't need to know about it. We fix this between us like adults, okay? And everything's good. But when I go to this person and they say, no, I don't care, I'm not going to fix the problem. Then I will not go to their supervisor. Then and only then I will go to my supervisor and say, I am having a problem with this other person in this other department. How would you like me to handle it? I've already tried to resolve it at the lowest level possible. I already talked to that person and that person refused to solve the problem. So I need your help. Can you help me get resolution for this problem? And at this first, at this point, my supervisor will either say, just ignore it. Don't worry about it. And I'll say, okay. And I'll go back to work or they'll say, yes, I'll talk to that person's supervisor and I'll let them know that this is costing us money, you know? Okay, that's what you need to know about the chain of command. Break the chain of command, work outside of the chain of command, violate the chain of command. Yes, it will probably have a negative impact on your job and on your career. That's a fact. Doesn't matter, military, not military. This is something, I don't even care what they call it in your company. This is a real part of any hierarchical organization. It's something that if you want to thrive in that environment, you need to understand and you need to work accordingly.